life, about vision, and about life that has turned off your dream. Life that has turned off your dream. Uh, I believe everybody, God has given everybody a dream. But life sometimes can turn your dream off. Mm. Well, God told me tonight, I want to talk to you about getting your dream turned back on. We're we going to turn your dream back on tonight. If you would just pay attention, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And, and we're going to get you to dream again. And you need to dream again. Praise God. God has given us all dreams. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who to believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all God's children say amen. Amen, amen. Life has turned off your dream. My God, what a message. I, as I begin to think about it, and I know God has given us all dreams. As a matter of fact, you know, the dream that God has given each one of us is so bright that hell itself and nothing that's dark could put it out. But, but sometimes it's covered up with life, with the things that we've been through that has that darkened our dream. And it's time for us to move all the clutter out of our lives so that we can dream again. Uh, we're going to go into the book of uh, Nehemiah. But before we do that, I want to go to Proverbs just to reiterate uh, what we talked about on last week. We talked about vision. We talked about eyesight, give you what you can see. Vision is what you can be. Uh, when you get clear vision, when you get clarity on your vision, uh, then you can run. Uh, a lot of times we can't run with a vision we can't see. And so we talked about the young man who Jesus prayed for his eyes. And, and when he first, uh, Prayed for the eyes of the Bible. See, he took him out of town. Oh, he took him out of his location. So a uh, location is everything. Uh, the environment that you're in uh, dictates where you are and what you do. You put yourself in the wrong environment and, and you, you become a part of what the environment is. And so Jesus took him out of his environment. And, and then he made spittle with mud and, and, and put it on his eyes. And so he asked him, he said, what do you see? The young man said, I, I see men as trees. Well, you know, he was seeing uh, something distorted. Uh, he wasn't seeing clear because uh, he still didn't see as well as he should have seen. And that's what happens with young believers when they come to know the Lord. And, and you ask them to run with a vision that they can't see. So they see all the things that are going on in the ministry. Sometimes they see some of the things that are wrong. And, and they can't see clear. But but Jesus labored with the man. It, he didn't leave him in that condition. And, and I know that he did it as a teaching moment because he could have prayed for him the first time and he got perfect eyesight. Uh, he did that on purpose so that he could teach us to be patient. Uh, so he went and prayed for him again. And when he prayed for him a second time, he was able to see clear. And, and so he always wants to give us clarity. Uh, once the man got clarity, he was able to see. And so that's what's important, is that we labor with the young people until they can see clear. Because they can't run with a vision that they can't see. Also, I want you to understand that everybody has vision. Everybody has a dream that God has placed in their lives. And hell itself can't put that light out. Uh, you have to discover what it is that God has put in your life. But I want you to know that you may have had your dream put out by life, but we're going to stir you up tonight and we're going to get you the dream again. Everybody, God has given everybody a dream. Now, your dream, totally different from mine. But I want you to understand when you see your vision and you accept your call, it will give you destiny. And see, destiny is your destination. Mm -hmm. So if I know where I'm going, 
And I know what road will take me there. I know what road won't take me there. So see, I can't get anybody to take me off course. See, a lot of times our problem is we don't know where we're going. So somebody else is going to tell. If you don't know who you are, somebody else is going to tell. Let me, let me tell you, there, there's a young lady, her name was Helen Keller. She was blind. And, and so they asked the lady to say, what would be worse than being blind? This was our answer, having eyes and no vision. Having eyes and no vision. Isn't that something? That was worse than being blind. She was blind, but she had vision. Some of y'all got eyes and can't see. No, oh, that makes sense. But God's going to turn all that around today. Listen at this. Diligence and destiny demands diligence. If God gives you a dream, then it has to be something that you're passionate about. You, you're going to have to fight for it. Nothing comes easy. Anything God gives you, you're going to have to put in the work. It, it's one thing, and the thing about it is one thing to talk about. It. See, a lot of times we can talk about things that we want to do. But we don't have the diligence to actually execute. We got to have the energy. We got to have the passion. See, the first thing happens is God to give us purpose. I'm going to tell you five things, five, five keys that you need to remember about tonight. The first thing is purpose. God will always give us purpose. And the Bible says that the purpose of God is going to stand. Many are the plans of a man, but God's purpose is going to stand. And, and what I love about God's purpose is I don't care where you are in life. God's purpose is going to stay. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we get off course, we go to jail, we get a baby, you know, we get a drug addiction. But let me tell you, God will work the drug addiction in. He'll work the baby in. He, he'll work whatever it is that distracted you. He'll work it back into your purpose. Glory to God. And he'll use what the devil thought he could destroy you with to save other people and bring them out. You know, whatever the devil used to destroy you, God will use you to bring others out of it. Yeah. You know, don't look at it as a defeat. You didn't lose anything because God will use what's left. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I say he will use what's left. See, sometimes we go through so much in life we think we ain't got much. That's all God needs is a little bit. But God will take what you have left and use it for his glory. God will make history with your life. Everybody came to make history in the world today. God has deposited something great in all of us. There's greatness in all of us. We got to see the value that God has placed in our lives. So many times we can see value in other people. We can respect other people. We can see their energy. And, and we don't have that same energy. Is in there. Stir yourself up. God gave us all a dream. I told you life has cut your dream off. But it's time to turn it back on again. It's time to dream again. Hallelujah. I remember, listen, let me tell you something. You know, we hear pastors and preachers say, God spoke to me. Yeah, and, and God did. He, he speaks to us. But let me tell you, when you say that or when pastors say that, you know, people think, well, God spoke audibly. And they heard a voice from heaven. I'm not saying that don't happen. That may happen. But I'm telling you, most of the time, when you hear somebody say that, what they're saying is that God spoke to them through an idea. See, God is constantly talking to us. He's talking to you all the time. It, listen, it's the dream. It's the idea that you can't get rid of. It keeps coming up. That's God talking. When you got an idea that keeps popping in your head, you keep knocking it down. It keeps popping up. God is talking to you. You want to know where God's talking? God is talking when you hear ideas that you can't get out of your head. You know why? Everything starts with an idea. The hat on your head was an idea. The laptop you listening to was an idea. The microphone I'm using was an idea. Everything starts with an idea. God has given us all dreams. It's time we dream again. It's time we understand that God has given us all purpose. You wouldn't have been created. There wasn't something God needed done that made you necessary. You're different from everybody else. 
I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've been through. God will use it to his glory because he said at the end of the day, his purpose is going to stay. I don't care how many years you wasted. If you still hear me today, you still got time to bring God glory. You still got time to redeem yourself and do what's right in his sight. God will use you right where you ought to be. You know, the, the most important thing about vision is when you write the vision down, the Bible says he that read it can run. People can't run with a vision they can't see. You got to write it down. You know, uh, the thing about vision is if God will give us a vision, he will make profit. You don't know this, but listen at this. When you discover your assignment and you discover what it is God has given you as vision, God has already assigned people to your life. Mm -hmm. God has already assigned certain people to finance your dream. Yeah, the money's already there. See, when my kids were going through school, my wife put up an insurance policy that would pay their tuition when they went off to college. She put it in reserve. See, God got money in reserve for you when you discover what you came to do. Yeah. Yeah. The money's already there because it ain't your vision, it's his. It's his purpose. And so he's already laid money aside for you. He's waiting for you to discover what it is he's putting your heart. See, you know, even the word work, when we think of work, we think about going on somebody's job, nine to five. But the word work is the word argon. It means manifest. It means reveal yourself. It means it means show me your assignment. Mm -hmm. That means God has put some things in your life. He says, show me what I deposited mm -hmm. in your life. See, we think work. Let me tell you, your job is what they pay to do. But your work is what you were born to do. Your job will pay you a salary. But your work will bring you wealth. Man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. Stir yourself up. God didn't shortchange anybody. He gave us all gifts. We need to develop our gifts. We need to recognize what we're passionate about. We're going to talk about Nehemiah because Nehemiah was passionate. Let me, let me tell you the good thing about passion and about purpose. When you find your work, it'll interfere with your job. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> You didn't hear me. See, I'm having that problem all the time. See, when you discover your work, it'll interfere with your job. See, my job is what they pay me to do. My work is what I was born to do. My job, it will, like I said, pay me a salary, but my work will bring me wealth. When you discover your gift, you won't have have a job no more. I, you will work yourself out of a job, praise God, mm -hmm. when you find your gift. Because your gift will make room and bring you before great men. <laughs> Amen. And everybody has a gift. God gave all of us gifts, talents, abilities. But I talk to you five Ps I want you to really lay hold on. The first one is purpose. The purposes of God is going to stand. The Bible says many are the plans of a man. But God's purpose is going to stand. It says without vision, the people perish. Mm -hmm. Or the people cast off restraint. Without vision or without revelation. You know, revelation is revealed knowledge. It's advanced knowledge. God will give you advanced knowledge. Well, God will put your head in the game. See, that's what you don't understand. God has the ability to put you up front. How do you think Adam was so smart? He kicked in his genius. The Bible says Adam named all the animals. He had never been to no school. You know what he got? He got downloaded from heaven. Listen at some of the animals. Hey, uh, uh, ju uh, giraffe. <laughs> you know, uh, hippopotamus. Yeah. Sound like a genius to me. Yeah. Elephant. Yeah. Rhinoceros. That's genius. 
He named all of the animals. See, you know why? Because if you trust God, if you tap into the source that God has given us, I promise you, you'll find your genius. Mm -hmm. Do you know that we only operate on about a third of our brain's capacity? If you was operating on 100%, you could think California and be there. <laughs> That's real. Yeah. You only operate on a very small percentage. Now think about this. If you smart as you are not on that percentage, just think about it. You tap in to your genius. Listen, you would come up with witty inventions that have caused you to be wealthy tomorrow. Some of the things God has already spoke to you about, you just keep kicking it to the side. Somebody else is going to come up and discover it and become wealthy. You'll be surprised how many things God has put in your lap and you just kick to the side. Because you don't have enough time to sit still and listen to the Holy Spirit. It's time, though, that we dream again. If you're one of these guys under my sound and my voice that has lost your dream, that life has choked your dream out, it's time to dream again. Mm -hmm. It's time to stir up the gift of God in your heart. Like I said, the light that God put in your life that's hell itself can't put it out. But you got to uncover it. It's been covered up with trauma, with disappointment, with pain, mm. with sorrow, mm. with misfortune. But you got to dig it up. I said, dig it up. If you need a tow truck, I'll send one to you. But you need to get it up. Backhoe, bobcat, whatever it is that you need to use to get it up. Let's dig it up. Praise God. We need to get it up. I, I promise you, God wants to deal with us and he wants to take us to another place. Like I said, I said, your work will interfere with your job. See, I go to work all the time, but my job requires a certain amount of time and my work requires even more and sometimes my work is interfering with my job mm -hmm. and I'm telling my job I can't do that because I got work to do see when you find your purpose everything becomes simple life becomes simple you know the sad part about it people who don't know their purpose they are easily distracted the devil distract them with all kinds of petty things. That's why it's important that you find your purpose. So you can't be easily distracted. I'm going to show you in Nehemiah that Nehemiah was bothered because of something that was going on in his life and in his family. And, and that's how we ought to be. We ought to be passionate about certain things. Say so things don't even bother me. Nehemiah found out that, that the city and the walls of Jerusalem was laying waste, and it bothered him to, to brought him to tears. You can find out that your little brother strung out on drugs and it don't bother you. You are callous. You need to break up the fallow ground. Your heart ain't right. If you ain't passionate, if you don't know you got family members that's struggling, that's going through hard times, that are, are at the bottom, and you ain't got no desire to pull them out, something ain't right. I said, something ain't right. Praise God. But I want you to understand, this is serious business. And, and we, one, one thing about vision is when you cast the vision out, the people that catch hold of it can run with it. I'll give you a perfect example. We're, we're, we're going to feed the homeless. We're giving the Christmas party for the homeless this week, Saturday. And as soon as I, I put it out there, people caught the vision. People started calling, what can I do? What can I do? What do you need me to do? Everybody who caught it was able to add and say, look, I know it's going to take the whole team to make this happen. And I was so proud of all the people who said, what, put me in. I don't care where you put me. I'm, I'm here. I'm there. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Some people even brought groceries to the house. Yeah. They didn't even wait the same day. My wife said they had packages coming. That's when people catch the vision. 
See, purpose is number one. You got to have person, but you got to have passion as well. You got to be passionate. And let me tell you, passion, you remember the passion of Christ? Mm-hmm. Passion means you can't kill it. I don't care what kind of opposition come, you can't put passion out. That's why when Jesus died, he came back. Because you can't kill passion. When you're passionate about something, I don't care how many oppositions come your way, mm. it ain't going to stop. Not if you pass. I don't care how many times you get knocked down, you're going to get back up. Because yeah. passion won't quit. Yeah. You got to have passion. You got to have passion and you got to know purpose. You got to know what God has called you to. That's the problem. We don't know what God has called us to. Okay, let me help you out. Whatever bothers you, you're called to change. Whatever the devil used to try to destroy you is something that God's going to use to help others. Mm. You don't have to be rocket science to figure that out. If the devil been beating you up, locking you up every chance he get, mm. it's because you got to minister to the lockups. Praise God. If the devil been, uh, been been using you to knock you up, then you got to minister to the knockups. Whatever it is, but I'm telling you, that's one of the indications that you know God's going to use. Because the devil will always try to destroy you from doing what God called you to do. Whenever you find vision, whenever you start talking about what it is God has told you, guess what? Whenever God gives you vision, the devil will send division. Mm. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, he's going to send some people. And you know the thing about it, opposition will come from outside. But if they can't stop you from outside, they'll send them from inside. Mm. I mean, they'll get right in the midst. And in the ones inside, that's the ones that's closest to you. That's the ones that you trusted. Yeah, the ones you, you laid your hand and you laid your guard down. Yeah, that's the one that'll kiss you like Judas. Rock to the core. Get right in your midst. Labor with you. Oh, you thought they were with you the whole time. They were setting you up. Dirty scum. That's true. That's the way it is. The enemy doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. He doesn't want you to fulfill your vision. So he'll do whatever it takes to stop it. That's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in the book of Nehemiah that the devil did everything he could to stop Nehemiah from building the walls of Jerusalem. They made fun of him. They talked about how weak they were, what they weren't going to be to accomplish. But I'm going to tell you something. You can't stop God's people when they know who they are and when they have a clear vision. See, when you got clarity, I don't care how much opposition comes. It ain't going to stop. See, when you got clarity, you can jump over obstacles. Amen. And, and when you get a stepping stone, you use it to, to, to step up to the next level. That stumbling block will be a stepping stone. You never allow anything to stop you because you're passionate about your purpose. So look, number one, purpose. Number two, passion. Number three, I wrote them down in order so you can make sure you get them down in order. Number three is a plan. God will always give us a plan. See, my plan is to build a multi-purpose center, to build a school, PPL, prepare people for life, a nursing home. You say, why are you so passionate? I'm passionate about a nursing home because I've seen so many elderly folks that are kicked to the curb when they ought to be rejoicing in the last days, they're dying in sorrow and in grief instead of in glory. A nursing home where people can care for them and treat them like royalty and that their end will be better than their beginning. That's why I want to do that. Because I've lived firsthand. I've seen what people can do. And how, how true they'll be to, to the elderly. And people like that that are lonely, they need somebody to wrap their arms around them and just let them know 
that I'm here for. Tell me that you care for me. Pray for me. Show me that you love me. People just need to be loved. Most of the time, we got the opportunity to share love with people and we, we're so bothered by our own life, we can't help nobody else. So distracted with the little things that the enemy throws at us. See, when you get clear vision, you can jump over that stuff and still be effective. That's what God wants. God wants us to become overcomers. You can't overcome, you can't be an overcomer if you don't overcome that. Yeah, they would love to keep you stuck right where you are. You know, we've listened, we listened to too many lies. You ain't never going to be nothing. You ain't never going to accomplish nothing. That, oh, that's lies. You bought a lie. And I'll bring you back to get you reach from. But the only thing you ought to believe is what the word of God says. God says, I know a plan I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil to give you a hope and an expected end. I, I don't care where you start. Mm -hmm. It ain't a matter of where you start. It's where you end. It, it don't matter where you was at eight months ago. It matters where you're at today. Hallelujah. I say it matters where you are today. See, because now you're on the road to glory. And God has great things in store for all of us. Let's go over to Nehemiah. Nehemiah. I'm going to start at the second chapter of Nehemiah. Purpose, passion, and plan. God will always give you a plan. I want you to watch how Nehemiah executes his plan. But I want you to see how he's affected by what's going on. Okay? Uh, I want to start in the second chapter, the first verse, but I'm going to read a little bit of the first verse. Because I want first chapter. I want you to see something. It says, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hekeliah, came to pass that in the month of Sicily in the 20th year, as I was in Sushan, the citadel, that Haniah, one of the brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them, this is Nehemiah, concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity uh, concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from captivity in the province, uh, in their, they are in great distress and reproach. That's his family. He said they're in great distress and reproach and the walls of Jerusalem are broken down and the gates are burned with fire. And so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept. <laughs> I thought about that. You know, and I said, you know what? A lot of times we hear about family members in, in, in devastating situations, whatever it might be, they may be prostituting, they may be drug addictions. I don't care what it is. And we don't have that same passion, that same hurt in our hearts like, Lord have mercy, what can I do to change that situation? See, Nehemiah had a burden for his people. Once he heard their condition, it was something that bothered him. You know what it did? It gave him purpose. He already had a job. His job was to serve the king. He was a cupbearer. He served the king his wine. But his work, he discovered his work, his purpose was to help restore the walls of Jerusalem. Once he found his purpose, his purpose or his work began to affect his job. That's why I say when you find your work, it's going to start affecting your job. Hallelujah. Praise God. And listen to this. It says he went to tears. He was so moved by the condition of Israel and the walls of Jerusalem and the people of God. So in chapter 2, it says it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Azurus, when wine was before him, 
that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in the king's presence before. Therefore the king said to me, why is your face sad that you're not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of the heart. So I became dreadfully afraid. And I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs lie waste and his gates are burned with fire? And the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to God of heaven. I said to the king, if it please the king, if it's in your service has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Now he's found his purpose. Uh, he's getting the, he got the approval of the king. And so this is my thing. When you find your vision, remember, God's purpose for your life is going to stand. So when we find our vision, then you find God's purpose for your life. And so you already have the king's approval. The king gave him the approval to go and rebuild the walls. Now that's just the beginning. He got the approval to do so. He got the finances he need to go and do it. But there was going to be some opposition that will come along with that. Now, the thing I want you to understand is he had a plan. He found his purpose and he was passionate about it. The next thing he needed though was people. See, you're going to always need people. God is going to always assign people to help you execute your purpose. Amen. That's why I say some of y'all had never discovered your purpose, but God has already assigned certain people to finance. The reason why they ain't showed up yet, because you ain't told nobody you got one. How are people going to know they called to help you when they don't know what you're called to do? So if you need somebody to be assigned to your purpose, then you need to start talking about what God told you you need to do. Let me say this to you. If God give you a vision, if it's big enough for you to finance, God didn't give it to you. You know why? Because God don't give you something that's ridiculous. God don't give you a purpose that's so big and so out of reach that it's going to make everybody else look at you like you're crazy. See, when I tell people that I'm going to have a multi-purpose center, that the property is going to be so big, we'll have all kinds of stuff on it. People look at me like, yeah, right. But that's the kind of purpose and vision God will give you. See, because God is too big to put in some box. He ain't jacking the box. He just keep popping out. So I'm telling you, dream again. I said, dream again. See, some of us are stuck. Say, well, man, I'm stuck in the mud. I can't get out. Man, you ain't stuck. All you need to do is look up your redemption cross now. God will pull you out of the mud. I'm telling you, listen, let me tell you, God is not limited in what he can do. You need a call? Man, God can give you a call. Get your heart right. No, get your heart right. I'm telling you. You know, you talking about what you need. You need a call, but God got plenty calls. And God plenty serving. God can touch a man and say, give him that call. Give him that bill. Everything belongs to the Lord. When your heart's right, I promise you're stumbling the people. You're stumbling the people that'll bless you in and out. I just want to bless you. I don't know why God told me to give you this. People will come looking you up. The reason why God ain't sending nobody to look you up because you ain't found out who you are yet. I say, you ain't found out who you are yet. You don't understand that you're a child of a king. Listen, if you were born in a royal household, you wouldn't want for nothing. Prince Charles and them, they don't want for nothing. They got everything they need. Well, you're a king's kid too. You just don't understand who you are. You ain't got a redemptive revelation yet. See, your mind, you need to renew your mind. That's the whole problem. You still think like you used to think. You still think you got to manipulate the system to get what you want? Yeah, you still trying to manipulate. If I do this, this going to happen. 
that ain't work for you in 40 years. Try something else. You keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. No, trust God with all your heart. I promise you, if you run with your whole heart, God will open doors you can't even close. Things that happen for you so fast, then people won't know what happened. I don't know how he did it. He must have did something he had no business. No, God just showed up. Because the Bible said God's eyes going to and fro throughout the earth, looking for somebody who he can show off in. Just give him a right to show off. You got to surrender all of it. You, you got to be a fool for Christ. See, I got too much pride. I can't tell people I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm going to be a Woodward Christian. I only talk about it when everybody else talking about it. No, no. Man, shout it from the house top. The Bible says in Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. To the Jew first, then the Gentile. But there is righteousness revealed from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. Man, listen, God will do a mighty work if you just trust him. I said, if you just trust him. Nehemiah found his purpose. He got approval from the king. He started moving forward with what God called him to do. He realized he needed some people to help him execute. So see, he had purpose. He was passionate. He had a plan. And now he got some people. See, you're going to need people to help you execute. See, that's what happened. When I told them we're going to give a Christmas party for the homeless. Man, look, we have people don't even go to our church calling up. What could I cook? You know why? People are passionate about See, this lady knew that that's the stuff I want to do. Now, this man talking about thing that's been in my heart for a while. What can I cook? Praise God. Amen. Yeah, people start buying, buying turkeys and bringing stuff. Look. I got you. What you need? That's what I'm talking about. When you write the vision down, he who read it can run. Not only the people of the church got involved, but you got people outside that say, look, I'm sending this. I'm cooking that. I'm cooking this. You know why? Because they were already passionate about doing something like that. They was waiting for somebody to come up with a great idea. Well, that was the Holy Spirit said, give them a party. Celebrate Christmas with them. They're not going to have a Christmas party. Not the one we're going to give them. Man, we're going to have a good time. And I'm excited about it. Because that's God's heartbeat. He said, if you've done it to the least of my brother, you've done it to me. He said, I was hungry. And you didn't give me nothing to eat. I was sick and you didn't visit me. I was in the hospital. You didn't come and see about me. I was in prison and you didn't visit me. And they said, when, Lord? When were you in jail? When were you in the hospital? And we didn't come. He said, if you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Yeah, that's for you. It's time we do the work. Put your hand to the work. Listen, everything God has ever called us to is going to take us doing it. And there's going to be some difficulty. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy, but I promise you it's going to be fulfilling. It's going to be a task, but guess what? We're going to accomplish. Because we got people with a mind to work. Look at the fourth chapter uh, of Nehemiah. It says, but it happened that when Sam battled, I said, when Sam Ballard heard that we were rebuilding the walls, he was furious. Isn't that something? See, when, when the devil hears that you finally got this vision, clarity, and you're starting to move forward, it makes the devil mad. Mm -hmm. Sam Ballard was furious. They wanted to stop the work. You think the devil wants you to fulfill your destiny here on earth? No, he's going to do everything he can to stop it. But guess what? It didn't stop me and mine. It ain't going to stop me. And I hope, you, God, you don't let it stop you. Praise God. It says, Sam Ballard heard they were rebuilding the wall that he was serious and very indignant, indignant. And he made fun of the Jews. He spoke before his brother and the armies of Samaria. And this is what he said. 
What are these weak Jews doing? Will they be able to strengthen themselves? Will they offer sacrifice? Will, will, will they be able to complete it in one day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, the stones that had been burned? Now Tobiah and Ammon, Ammonite was beside him, and he said, whatever they build, even if a fox goes up, break the walls down, they won't be able to stand. And this is what Nehemiah said, hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads. Give them as plunder to the land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity. Do not let their sin be blotted out from before you. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders. Listen at this. Nehemiah and them had to make their mind up that they were going to fight for their territory. They were going to fight for their families. You, you need to fight for your family. You need to fight for your dreams. Fight for your children. Mm -hmm. If you ain't going to fight for nothing else, fight for Pugaloo. Yeah, fight for your children. And when I say fight, I mean you need to do what's right. You need to live a life that's going to be pleasing before God and give him an example to fight. Fight for your children. Mm -hmm. Fight for your family. Fight for your brothers and sisters. Somebody got to stand up. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall blindly. They made their mind up. Listen, we're not letting down. We're not letting up. We're going to fight. No matter what, we're going to fight. And that's what I'm telling you. They tried their best to stop, but they couldn't. Even when they got to the point where the Bible says they had one spear in one hand and a tool in the other, they were ready to fight, but they were going to put the walls up. All I'm telling you is put the walls back up in your life. Yeah. Put the walls back up. That, that means the devil can't walk in and out of your life no more. You need to put walls of righteousness up. Yeah. Put a standard up. Live a certain way. You can't just live any kind of way. You got to have standards. That's what we don't have. The world is, is coming against all the standards of God. They, they, want, they want two women to be married and raise a boy and expect them to be known. Hey, and they call it a new norm. The devil is alive. Ain't nothing normal about it. Straight, straight from the pit of hell. And it goes against everything God stands. And like I said, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. So stop being so passive. Stop being a wuss. Oh, you know, people got it right to do what they want. Not when it goes against the word of God. God's word is the final authority. Yeah, yeah, our Constitution, you might be able to write a referendum and change the laws of the Constitution, but you ain't going to change this Constitution. This is the Constitution we live by. The Word of God. See, one thing about this is we don't serve a president, we serve a king. And the Word of the king is law. Whatever he said, that settles it. Everything else doesn't really matter. But of course, we're dealing with opposition on every hand. But you don't have to buy. Because whatever you buy to on the way up is going to be lower when you get there. Remember that. Whatever you buy to on the way up is going to be lower when you get there. I want you to understand these five principles that are work in your life. Purpose, passion, plans, people. We need people. And the five, the five thing I want you to know is potential. You got potential. Potential is the ability to accomplish success. God has already put potential in your life. You never discover some of the things God has deposited in your life. See, because let me tell you something. I, I've seen times where I got friends who build uh, cars. They love racing cars. And I got a friend, he got an old Nova, beat up old Nova. I, I'm going to talk about this beat up old Nova because I got some friends, they beat up too. But let me say this. In that Nova, under the hood, boy, he didn't put a brand new Nova. So when you look at the Nova, it don't look like nothing. But boy, when he start that Nova up and you hear it run, run <laughs> he got some fire under that hood. That's just like some of my friends. They may be beat up. Toe up from the floor, but oh, God put some fire in their bones. Lord have mercy. They can start a fire everywhere they go. 
They just need to let the Holy Spirit have his way in their lives. I'm just telling you for, for the future. I want you to understand if you discover your purpose and you're passionate about it and you got a plan in place and people are going to run and support it because God has already assigned certain people to finance your business. He'll send the people and you already got the potential. There's nothing that can stop you but you. The only thing holding you back is you. Maybe you, you're called to build a facility for battered women. Guess what? The money's already laid up for you. Put the work in. Write it down. Write it down and then share it with people. If that's what you're passionate about, watch how many people show up that's passionate about the same thing. God has already assigned certain people to finance your purpose. Like I said, but you're going to have to write it down. If you don't write it down, you won't ever be able to share with others what it is God is putting in your heart. You need to dream again. I say you need to dream again. You need to move all the clutter off your dream. All the things that's putting the light out. I told you, God has put a light in all of us. And that light is so bright that all hell itself can't put it out. The only thing that to put it out is the stuff you keep throwing on top of it. And that's the stuff you've been through that causes, we call life, all kinds of disappointment. All kinds of heartbreaks. But it's time that we clean it up and let the light shine again. Come on, let's dream again. I say, let's dream again. God has given us all a dream. Remember, you wouldn't have been born if there wasn't something God needed that made you necessary. The ones that are being distracted had to find their purpose. If you're letting every little thing distract you, then you need to find purpose. Because when you find purpose, the distractions no longer become a problem. Instead of a stumbling block, they become a stepping stone. Don't let the devil stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Remember, we all came. Purpose comes before the product. I say purpose comes before the product. So before you were created, there was something God needed done that made you necessary. Remember, I don't care how distracted you've gotten. I don't care how far off and left field you've gone. I said, if you made a baby, got to work the baby in. If you got an addiction, got to work the addiction in. God will take what you think the devil was going to use to destroy you. He'll work it in for his glory. Praise God. You'll go from being a drug addict to having a drug program. Amen. Mm -hmm. God, this, God will turn it around. What the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Do you believe that? Can you dream again? I said, can you dream again? Come on. Dream, let's dream again. Let's turn our dream up back on. Stop letting the devil blacken our eyes. Make us feel like we're unworthy. God didn't create no losers. I say God did not create any losers. We're all victorious in Christ. And the devil's no match for you when you understand who you are. My name is Gregory Baptiste from Behold the Lamb Ministries International. Well, we're changing lives, one life at a time. Remember, without a vision, the people perish. Or without revelation knowledge, the people cast off restraint. Uh, that means they have no discipline. Remember, discipline is the key to success. Without discipline, you're not going to have much success. Because discipline will determine Everything. It'll determine where you go, who you hang out with, what kind of movies you watch. It'll even determine what you eat. I'm working on that now. <laughs> About what you eat. 
But discipline to determine what you eat as well. If you want to live, you're going to do the right thing. If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, or if you, know, you need to know Christ as your personal Savior, and you want to give your heart to Christ, would you pray with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died and went to hell so I wouldn't have to go. I accept the sacrifice he made on the cross for me today. From this day forward, I'll serve you. I give my whole heart to you today. I turn my back on the world, on the devil, on the drug addiction, on everything else that's pulling on me. I refuse to, I refuse to give my ear to the enemy anymore. I want my ear to be tuned into the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead and guide me into all truth. From this day forward, I serve you with all of my heart. I'll commit to you, Lord, because I know when I commit to you, you commit to me. And Lord, I know that you give me things I can't even imagine. I'm moving closer to you. You said, draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. Well, I'm drawing near now. Coming closer to you, Lord, so that you can show me my purpose, so that I could live a purposeful life. Jesus Christ, come into my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to sow into this ministry, we set up with Givelify. We also set up with a, a cash app, dollar sign, Behold the Lamb Church. Whatever you sow into this ministry will be used to touch lives one life at a time. God bless you. We're at 1520 Alvin Street every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. I promise you, we won't hold you long, but we'll make you strong. God bless you. Huh? Seven.